the University of Iowa. Mark Blasek came into his own during the 1986 season. After impressive wins in our first three games, you remember that Mark suffered that shoulder injury in the Texas El Paso game that played him off and on for the remainder of the season. However, he still completed 61% of his passes. But who will ever forget his leadership in the second half of that Minnesota game? Or that closing drive that Mark engineered in the final seconds of the Holiday Bowl? An All-Big Ten academic first team, a Japan Bowl starter, an Iowa co-captain, here to give the invocation tonight from Monaco, Pennsylvania, co-captain Mark Glossing.
and this is Chuck Murphy, Dave's parents from Rhinebeck. Jerry's parents from Oak Lawn, Illinois. And Mr. and Mrs. Ken Springer, Mark's parents from Bettendorf. Are there any other parents that are here that we've missed? Let's have a nice big hand for all of these parents. And also we have Mr. and Mrs. Dwight Clark, the Tim's, uh, Tim Clark's uh, parents. Tim is one of the managers from Columbus Junction. And Mr. and Mrs. Phil Chatham are John's parents from Cedar Rapids. This banquet would not be possible were it not for a group of people that have sponsored the banquet. Their names are on the back of your program, and I hope that you'll just take a moment to look at those. Without them, this, as I've said, this banquet would not be possible. Their names are there, and with all of these sponsors, just stand for a moment. Let us give you a, a round of applause to express our gratitude. With all of the sponsors, There was a slight error in the printing of the program. There were two names that were omitted from the program. And we'd like to thank and recognize Harold Boyer from Grinnell. Harold, where are you? <laughs> He's here somewhere. There he is. Oh, uh, go get your mind. Stand up there first. From Grinnell. And uh, John Gregory of Gregory Products. We apologize for that on our program. The committee for this 1987 Seniors Banquet, uh, Harvard Garner and Dan Berry, Mark Eggleston, Pat McCarney, John Krieger, and Gary Hughes. These are the people who did all of the work and are responsible for this banquet. Let's have them stand for this banquet. Whenever the sport, uh, whenever the sponsors of a, of a banquet like this uh, are looking for a master of ceremonies, they oftentimes ask someone from the sports media, or a sports announcer, or a sports writer, or maybe uh, even uh, a public address announcer. Uh, I, I'm re reminded of, a, of an incident involving a colleague of mine who had aspirations to do what I do for Iowa football and basketball. It seems that the athletic director at this particular university was interviewing candidates for the PA job. So this fellow went to the athletic department and he inquired of the receptionist where they were conducting the interviews for the public address announcer. Uh, she informed him the interviews were being held in such and such an office. Sometime later the fellow reappeared and the receptionist inquired whether or not he had gotten the job. And he said, uh, heck no, uh, they're not hiring any, any Baptists. <laughs> On June 11th, 1970, an event took place in the Letterman's Lounge of the old field house that literally changed the course of University of Iowa athletic history. That was the day that Chalmers Bump Elliott became athletic director at the University of Iowa, a post that he has now held longer than any of his predecessors, 16 years. And during the 16 years that Bump has been in charge, the athletic program has experienced enormous success. Bump has also developed a great propensity for hiring outstanding coaches, not the least, of course, being Dan Gable, and Tom Davis and Hayden Fry. Iowa's football teams have appeared in six straight bowl games and the Iowa basketball team has played in NC2A tournaments seven of the last eight years. The Hawkeye wrestling team is legendary, having won nine straight NC2A championships and 11 of the last 12 national championships. 
And Tom Dave and Tom Dunn's gymnastic team won the Big Ten in 1986, and Glenn Patton's Hawkeye swimming team has captured two recent Big Ten titles. The Hawkeyes have won 23 Big Ten titles and 11 national championships during Bump's 16 years <laughs> as athletic director. the surging success of the University of Iowa women's athletic programs, which Bunk shares with his counterpart, Christine Grant. Since the fall of 1985, the University of Iowa has been ranked number one nationally in four different sports. Led by the Hawkeye football team, ranked number one for five straight weeks in the fall of 1985. And I wonder what other athletic program in the country can match that. The only man who has appeared in the Rose Bowl in five different capacities, as a player, as an assistant coach, as a head coach, as an assistant athletic director, and as an athletic director, Bump was a member of the Iowa coaching staff for five years, and he helped develop the Hawkeyes into the 1956 Big Ten champions and Rose Bowl champions. Often called a coach's athletic director, but to Hawkeye fans everywhere, a good friend and a fellow Hawkeye, would you please give a warm Iowa welcome to our number one athletic director, Bob Collier.
So congratulations to all of the seniors. We're delighted to have the parents that are here this evening, and we wish you well in the future, and we know you will succeed in your chosen profession, whatever it may be. Thank you so much. So, like fine wine, Iowa football under Hayden Fry has gotten better with age. How true it is. There are those who would argue that Iowa football had only one direction to go when Hayden arrived. But it took a captain to direct the team in that direction, and that man is credited with doing one of the greatest rebuilding jobs in all of college football. The Hawks are now recognized as having one of, the co one of college's elite programs in football. Iowa has finished the last four seasons in the nation's top 20. Under Coach Fry, Iowa has played in six consecutive bowl games. They tied for one Big Ten title in 1981, won another one outright in 1985, and finished in the first division of the rugged Big Ten every year since he came to Iowa. And individual honors have been plentiful. 15 of Hayden's Hawkeyes have been named first or second team All-America. 18 Hawkeyes of the Fry years are currently playing professional football. Five of Hayden's Hawkeyes were number one drafts in the NFL. Mike Hayden incidentally was number one in both the USFL and the NFL. Two more Hawkeyes were number two drafts. And who knows how many of the current crop of Hawkeyes will join this very select group. The number who have made all Big Ten and all academic first team is now approaching 50 players. So successful was Hayden's rejuvenation of Iowa football that his teams have played to sell out crowds 39 of 40 games in Kinnick Stadium. Kinnick Stadium was a large to 66,000 in 1983, so more of you Hawkeye fans could enjoy the renewed interest in Iowa football. Coach Fry has won Coach of the Year honors in three conferences, the Southwest, Missouri Valley, and the Big Ten. He's taken teams to nine postseason bowl games, the Sun Bowl, Cotton, Hot Astro Blue Bonnet, the Rose Bowl twice, the Peach, the Gator, the Freedom, and the Holiday. In 1985, he was awarded National Coach of the Year honors by the Golden Helmet Club of, of Seattle, Washington. He was also named the 1985 recipient of the James Arnberg Memorial Award for distinguished service to college football. Hayden would be the first person to say that he could not have done all of this alone. Coach Fry has attracted an outstanding staff of assistant coaches, and he has maintained great continuity on his Iowa staff. Seven of his assistants have been with him since his arrival at the University of Iowa, and the entire staff has been together for the last four seasons. So I could go on and on, but you want to hear from the man who has directed this Mission Impossible. The winningest coach in Iowa football history, the one who likes to scratch where it itches, <laughs> number one coach in the heart of Hawkeye fans everywhere, please welcome Coach Hayden Fry. and 
if you know these youngsters like we do and their background and for all these people with their uh, different ideas and opinions we have a lot of uh, what you would classify true individuals among this group to bring them together as a family and to watch them work together on the football field help one another off the field it's truly rewarding to all the coaches. I'm sitting here looking over at, uh, at Ed Crowley. And it, it was going through my mind, Ed being our head trainer, just how many times that he wrapped Robert Smith's ankle or shoulder or head. <laughs> how many times he's encouraged Mark Belasic to go ahead and practice, try out a new knee brace that he had. Uh, Jeff Dross, uh, how long did it take Ed to learn to stay away from Dross when he's hurt? <laughs> it goes on and on and on. It's uh, all the trainers, all the managers, all the coaches, Bump and his staff, Rita, Debbie, all of the secretaries. I'm not sure they can recall back when we first threw these young men's name into our computer, the profile, all of the academic uh, information as well as the football information and the physical information that we accumulate prior to inviting young men to visit the campus. And this year alone we have 923 names in the computer in order to invite approximately 70 to campus in order to give out approximately 23 scholarships. <coughs> highly, highly competitive and to think that four and in some instances five years ago we ended up recruiting these young men who have been the nucleus of four bowl teams, it, it's, uh, it makes me feel extremely happy and gratified and satisfied to be associated with them, but at the same time, not like the pros where they get to keep the players, it, it's very, very sad to see these young men go. I'm sure that many of you in the audience, would, uh, if you had the opportunity up here at the mic tonight, could really share some, some heartwarming experiences with the young men that you have so generously given of your time and open the doors to your your home and the business been downtown and when they were depressed and uh, had the heartaches when things didn't go right or they were injured and they couldn't participate your encouragement and the things that you did to help these young men mature and accept life and the hard knocks of life that invariably go with all of us to help them see their way through and now be graduating and uh, they've, they've made such a valuable contribution to our overall athletic program and uh, I always enjoy hearing Bump talk because uh, he's sitting back. He's not where the bullets are flying on the sideline. So he has an opportunity to make a very, very accurate evaluation of all you guys and what you've achieved and what you've accomplished and what you contributed to the overall program. And I know uh, Bump's a very proud person. He has a wonderful opportunity to say something nice about all of the sports because he's in charge of all of them. But I think if you really pin Bump down, football is extremely close to his heart, having played and been a coach. And he can tell you that, that our athletic program uh, depends so heavily on the financial income that's provided by the football team. And you guys, you graduating seniors are the guys that have helped provide money for the non-revenue sports, the women's programs, and all the others. So you not only have represented us well in regards to the one off record, you have an awful lot of other student athletes receive a top flight education because you provided through television receipts, ball receipts, game receipts. You helped Buck Callahan go out and raise money because everyone likes to identify the winner. But you contributed in so many different ways. I don't want to point that out to some of you seniors because we never talk about things like this. But when, when the bullets start flying, well, we're talking about combat, how we're going to win the ball game. And we don't get around to patting you on the back and expressing our appreciation for all of the, the, the side effects that you truly have uh, in regard to the University of Iowa, the image that you create, the way you conduct yourself on radio, television, the way you talk to the news media. Uh, all of those things go into making the image that you created, and it, it, it's a great image. It's, so inspirational for my coaching staff to go across the nation to recruit and hear the mamas and daddies or the high school coaches speak with authority and knowledge about our program because of the exposure uh, our football team has given uh, to the University of Iowa. It's always very, very complimentary the way our guys conduct themselves.
And I, I really think that's the key to the success that we've had in football. And I know about everything else when these young men go out into the world on their own, which is just around the corner, that they're going to remember the things that help them become winners here on the college level. They're not going to desert the criteria that they've worked so hard to put into their own personal, uh, into their own personality. Uh, those things were earned. Many of these guys here bled a lot. They sweated a lot. They took a lot of hard licks. Therefore, it's within their personality now because they've earned it. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's something you can't get out of a textbook. You can get a lot of nice things out of a textbook. You can get a lot of nice things out of a Sunday school class. But until you actually experience it yourself, and it's in a pressurized situation like the game of football, you don't really appreciate what these kids have done for our university. We're here tonight to recognize them, and the highlight of the uh, night is always to have them come up and say a few words. You never know exactly what you're going to say, but I think it's always from their heart, good, bad, or indifferent, it's them. And uh, some of my coaches kind of cringe sometimes because some of these guys are very, very honest. <laughs> They're very forthright in what they say. But that's all part of it. Uh, to all you seniors, they have the coaching staff, the trainers, the doctors, and the secretaries, and the manager, everyone has had an opportunity, uh, an honor uh, to be associated. We want to say we love you. We're extremely grateful for what you've contributed here. Uh, you've just been a blessing. And we wish you every success in the future. We know that you're leaving here to win. You're going to continue in life. So, Father Bob, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I'm going to ask you to, to, if you don't mind, to introduce the individuals tonight. I have a habit of saying things about the, the players when I introduce them, and some of them I, 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 I say too much, and others uh, maybe I don't sound up. And it might seem like I might be a little bit, uh, you know, showing a little favoritism to certain guys. And I don't want to do that anymore. I, you know, I, I can tell a lot of funny stories on different, different guys in here. But I think when they come up, you, you'll get to see the guys. You don't recognize a lot of them because they don't have their uniform on tonight. They, they're pretty nice looking group of people. And uh, while Bob, if you don't mind, if you would in, uh, individually introduce these young men, it would really help me tonight. And I won't I'd get emotional, but I, I have a hard time controlling myself. Thank you very much.
Chris Brown and people laughing and uh, so I said, Come, you gotta you gotta keep your head up because you're blinded. I kind of look like Coach Snyder. And that used to always worry me, but Thank you. 